I don't think we can get much better than this. Pretty low energy tonight, boys. Pretty. I just saw my family, and then I had to leave them to go do this. And here we are with the Courage the Cowardly Dog podcast known as Liquid Courage. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, we did it. We're here. It's been a hot second. Uh, maybe for, well, yeah, for it might you. might have been list- a hot month. For you oh, listeners, no. it's been a minute. Um, <laughs> get us a sponsor. Uh, <laughs> did you want me to get you a sponsor? No. Mm, it'll be um, Raid Shadow Legends, you know it's it. It's gonna, yeah. And is there a, a problem with get, Raid Shadow Legends? Get me a sponsor yes. that I can retire on, and then I can promise consistency. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you know how that sponsorship works. <laughs> I think I do. Um, yeah. We're here. We're gonna record. Um, yeah, we're gonna do our best. It's, because we it love is, you. It's an early recording session, so our our energies are at wildly different positions. <laughs> Give them I a have, few minutes to drink. They'll, they'll, they'll I, haven't, I haven't taken my nap. <laughs> I was going to say 7.30 is um, that early? Is that you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. For, for um, us to be to this point, yeah. For me, it's early because I, I don't have as many drinks in the system as I normally do. Oh, I just think in, in general it's early. But um, we're here to talk about everyone's favorite. An enjoyable dog, which is courage. And that's what we are to do today. And... Um, Oh, I thought we are, we are, my uh, favorite dog these couple episodes. He's kind of are, a dick. Yeah, we're closing in on the end of season two. Here, I thought we were going to talk about Marmaduke. Um, that's no one's favorite dog. So <laughs> Marmaduke's very dead. Right? Oh, yeah. Everyone knows that, right? Marmaduke's been dead for years. Yeah, it has to have been. <laughs> um, right? Yeah. But we're here. Uh, and we're but first. What about Clifford? In- no, he just um, went to the farm. Also dead. Also dead. <laughs> dead. Clifford would have. Clifford would have lasted like collectively five years. And what a destruction! Because that he would yeah. Have put because on. when you when you have a dog, <laughs> the larger the animal, the faster it dies when it comes to dogs. Not other animals for some reason, but dogs. The bigger the dog, the shorter the lifespan. Oh. Yeah. So he had like three months. Is that what you're Yeah, like, like five years, you know? <laughs> like, uh, what was it? Uh, what was the name of that? What was the name of the kid in that? I don't fucking oh, know. I don't fucking know, dude. Is it Emily, is it Emily Grace? What was the last time you, uh, you read it? Emily Marie. Dude, I can't I, remember. I, dude, all I remember about Clifford the Big Red Dog is Clifford the Big Red Dog. All right. Allow me to know. suffer through that sentence again. I remembered his shits were the size of buildings. Volkswagen Beetles. Um, Whatever. <laughs> Emily well, Elizabeth, sorry. Emily Elizabeth. <laughs> All right, anyway. Ah, two first names. Yeah. My favorite. All right, so we, uh, we're we back. Correctly. <laughs> we're back. We're closing in on the, 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 the near end of the season the uh, for season two. Yeah. So that's fun. Uh, boys, what, uh, what has been your season two? Uh, good. There's like been a it, lot of yeah. good episodes, yeah. A lot more mm-hmm. production value than, uh, season one. Mm-hmm. They, to me, though, there is kind of a hit miss, like, one good, bad, good, bad. Sometimes it's two goods and one bad, but it's, like, yeah, right. And by goods, I mean real good, right? Yeah. Like, yeah I'm yeah, not yeah. just talking, like... Oh yeah, that was fine, but there haven't been there haven't been the all rights. It's been like really good or kind of okay. Yeah, yeah there haven't been any all rights that I could see. But um, <laughs> we uh, yeah, Tim, what's your what's your highlight? Um, for the whole season, the highlight of mm-hmm. like, um, okay, and it wasn't that joke. I'll tell you that much. Nah, <laughs> not not at all. I mean, um, it was, it was, nope. it was all right. Nope, no, it wasn't. Human Habit Trail, always my favorite. It's a small world after all. Oh, good. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that is the episode I remember the most when I think of Courage. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and I, I, I do love that episode. Yeah, I oh, think was this I, the season with Little Muriel? Uh, yes. Oh, maybe. Let me see. I think. Uh, I, I think this my my. I think we've we've seen an uptick in production. Little yeah, Muriel definitely. season one. Yeah. Um, they've been. I feel like they've been more willing to be a little weird and wacky weird. with concepts. Yes. 
So, uh, yeah. Uh, by what do you mean? <laughs> Weird and wacky. And, and concept. by that, uh, I think um, that's that's a perfect segue into talking about the first episode that we're dealing with today, which is the House of Discontent, which is a classic Poltergeist episode with a twist. The Poltergeist yes, is, is God. No. No. But yes. But is... no. Well, it is kind of a. It's the Harvest it's, Moon. Yeah, it's an extra-dimensional being, you know? Yeah, it's some sort of Lovecraftian yeah. thing. I'll figure it's, it out. It's some kind of omnipresent individual. Um, and it, it answers a lot of questions uh, that we've <laughs> that all had. It? Yeah, about uh, why the fuck do they have a farm? And that answer is, we don't know. <laughs> because they don't know. Because nothing grows, apparently. Nothing grows. This that's been a reoccurring like statement that has been made, even though there have been several times where things have grown. Miriam but, pulling the eggplants out of the ground. Nothing grows here. Nothing grows here. Nothing. But this episode, yeah, it begins. It begins out in the field where Muriel is reading from the book of a book of prayer about the harvest moon to the harvest moon. She opens a gateway no matter what. Don't, oh, yeah. And yeah, Courage, that's... What did Courage do? He was ringing a bell? He rings a bell. He rings a bell and does a dance to try to revive Eustace's plant. But that plant is very <laughs> dead. And <laughs> Eustace is... Right out uh, of Soma. Yeah, and Eustace is uh, very fed up with the whole ordeal. Because nothing grows here. Nothing he, grows here. He's tired of trying... Yes. You know, he's tried nothing, and he's all out of ideas. Nothing grows here. Nothing. Uh, they can't revive this poor plant, and that, because uh, the plant's been terribly uh, just not... Okay, I'm going to jump ahead a bit. We mm -hmm. find out that the plant was never watered. <laughs> Oh, you're just going to give away the whole fucking story. No, you, just, you just gave away the plot twist. Yeah. No, I'm just really mad at that fact, because that was like, why did you go to prayer and bell worship and summoning this before this water? Was the, this was the drought of 87. They couldn't spare any water. They had That's horseshit. Means. Did you not see? <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that, because that's horseshit. Um... So they, they go spare any water. Uh, they go inside and shit starts happening. Muriel gets attacked by everything in the kitchen and begins screaming. Yeah. Eustace is trying to take a bath. He turns up the radio to not hear Muriel screaming. Uh, Courage yeah. is right. outside chewing on Eustace's truck seat, which and shows that Courage is a bit of a dick. When he wants to be. Yeah. Or that now, he's a all, dog. It, it all just depends on who started the war. Was it Courage yeah. or was it Eustace? <laughs> Either way, he shouldn't be eating the stuffing from a car seat. Mm. I mean, you're right. But if he's just doing it to piss off Eustace, then I mean... He still shouldn't eat it, though. <laughs> just rip it out. Go bury it like you've buried everything else. He eats it. He swallows that one piece he whole. He get fed this night. Uh, <laughs> that's... That actually might track um, <laughs> for a thing that comes up. And there's this voice that starts saying, get out. And he, Courage hears Muriel being attacked and he can't get in. So his course of action is to get in the truck and back into the house. And you know. while that's happening, just one sec, when, while that's happening, Eustace also begins to hear a voice. He gets very scared. And then all of the water shoots out of the house and into the bathroom. And even where there's no pipes. Yeah. Well, okay. arguably. It's like, we don't yeah, know it's like that could have been supernatural water from yeah. the harvest moon. Ghost uh, but water. I will, but I will. I mean, <laughs> the ghost the can raise temperature and shut and slam doors. <laughs> it can be very squirty. You never know. Though I, though I will give you, we don't know the plumbing layout of this house. Eustace and could have been drunk when he fucking right. put those Does pipes Does anybody have the blueprints for this house? We can well, figure yeah. this out. I'm sure someone has made them. Well, and the other thing that I was thinking of is like... The disappearing it, dining room table. With I was like, if there's one thing that we have learned is that this house is Mobius as shit. It, it, it both out. exists and doesn't exist. 
Turns out Eustace is the next Doctor Who. It just hasn't reached that point yet. <laughs> the house is bigger on the inside. Um, and so this... Is, so is courage, apparently. Fucking A. Because, yeah, Muriel's being uh, just uh, assaulted by fruits and vegetables and in the kitchen. And various products. And, yeah, and various foodstuffs. Um, which begs, again, the question of, hey, hey Harvest Moon ghosts, why didn't you hit her with something more substantial and courage's solution to this is to pick muriel up and shove her entirely into his mouth and that was a time that we all went okay it's one of these episodes another fetish born (laughs) yeah um and we we saw that and then we dealt with uh we we dealt with eustace crashing through the ceiling with all of the water which then also crashed through the floor of the kitchen and into the basement which sometimes extends under the kitchen but sometimes doesn't right and that's where they see a floating disembodied head it's not even like incorporeal like you can't see it's just no he's just a big he's just just a big face yeah not just a, a big egghead. Yeah, not a farmer. <laughs> and that's where we find out that uh, Eustace is in fact not a farmer because the spirit of the Harvest Moon is there to tell him that he's not. <laughs> and that <laughs> it's time spir- for them to the, leave. The spirits of farmers only. Coming back oh because my he's God. <laughs> Farmersonly.com. That's amazing. Only because amazing. Eustace just tried to find someone new and not a farmer not a farmer get the fuck out not a farmer but i'm seeking a farmer not a farmer didn't i apply i don't know if you heard me not a farmer dot com and that's uh that's essentially the the harvest moon tells them they have to leave because they can't grow anything and, and if every house is like that, I'd be pretty fucked too. <laughs> You're yeah. bad, and you should feel bad. That's what yeah, said. that's really what he does. And so uh, then they reason with the spirit of Hall- Halloween. The you sp- have to get. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I said. The spirit hey, man, of the Halloween Harvest Moon. Round three can't can't Oof. deal with this. Uh. And they agree to... He agrees to give them till midnight to grow a crop. Just a crop. Anything. Just, grow just something. A, just a singular crop. Anything. And really, he he really only gives them like 10 minutes, right? Yeah, no, yeah. there's not a lot of time left. And it's literally what's, impossible, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and what's stupid is that he does this. And Eustace then goes, No. <laughs> I Fuck don't have you. to prove anything to you. I don't gotta prove anything to you, old man. Fuck you. <laughs> As Eustace would. Yeah. It's in character. Uh, let's, let's... Yeah. And and so that again falls to courage, because that's the TV show, to fix the whole thing, you know? Yeah. And, and Courage uh, is a shitty farmer too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not good. Not a good farmer. Um, mostly due to the fact that I don't think Courage knows how to deal with plants either. I mean, he's only had Eustace to look to. Well, he had Muriel, too. That's not true. At uh, what yeah. part do you think that uh, Courage doesn't know how to help plants grow? Uh, well, you know, it took him four tries to come up with water. Uh, well, hey, what man, you, what if kind this, of thing he this was a cactus, though. It's not, yeah, though. Sure. It's a flower. <laughs> Which is also arguably not a crop, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. He didn't specify grow a crop. He said grow something. Uh, yeah, that's so. it's something. And uh, he tries to bring this, uh, this poor f- plant back to life through music and an IV drip and other means. And, and the sun lamp. Oh yeah, no, it was a heat lamp. It wasn't even a sun lamp. It was just a heat lamp. Been great don't do if that. We're in a restaurant. Like, yeah, don't don't do that, folks. A if your tomatoes are bad. Already arid area. Yeah, don't, don't do, do that. Um. Before he lands on water. 
how? How but, is that? How was that four tries before water? And he didn't. Well, first off, he did try to get some water to the plant, right? With the little nope. water bucket. That's and what the I water mean. Bucket well, was empty. Yeah, it was the it was the watering can. Right. Uh, sorry. Whatever. But. Well, I mean, there's a difference between a bucket and a watering can. <laughs> Not in my house. One's got a hole in it. One doesn't. Yeah. Uh, see, that's where you're different. Because in my house, all the buckets have holes in them. If your bucket has a hole in it, it's not going to be a very good bucket, is it? That's why it's used for water. One would argue it's not a bucket anymore. Ah, uh, you and your fancy New York buckets. Me, me, and my, <laughs> me and my fucking very standard definition of bucket. You <laughs> and your fancy buckets without holes. We here in Kansas don't really take kindly to that. You're in the biggest metropolitan area in Kansas. I stand Ooh. by what I said because I'm still in Kansas. Guess who's not? Guess who else isn't a farmer? Also me. Tim. Tim's not a <laughs> farmer. He's um, going to be harvest. Um, he's going to be visited by the ghost of the harvest moon tonight. I've been to Atwoods once. You better grow something in that. So I'm possible. country. Did you just put an S in Atwood? Askwood. I mean, I thought it was Atwoods. I've been to no, but... Atwoods. At wood, mm. so it's at woods. Mm. Hmm. Mm. There's not very many of them, but I've been to multiples. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are these the lies you tell yourself at night to sleep soundly? The lies I tell to you when I mispronounce a word. <laughs> not a farmer. <laughs> um. So. Uh. Yeah, and so. Courage needs water, and he remembers <laughs> all of the water that crashed into the basement. But you know, midnight strikes, so the ghost locks all the doors. Which so I the thought... go, yeah. <laughs> Hang on. So the ghost locks all the doors. It's a good thing. It, it's too bad that there wasn't anything that happened earlier in the episode <laughs> that could have allowed him to not deal with doors. Well, to Courage's <laughs> point, they were in the basement, so he still would have had to try to get the basement door open. But there's a big hole. There is the a there is a there's a massive hole in the wall of the kitchen, which also has a hole in the floor, which they fell through into the basement. Oh shit, you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah. With a straight line. <laughs> this is a continuity error that made my brain scream. I know it's a cartoon. I don't care. It made my brain scream. Also, wouldn't it be impossible for it? them then to like be so hot that they would pass out yep because heat rises so heat would just go out of that hole like, uh -huh. it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be cool down there but it means, would be but... unpleasant yeah but it wouldn't be but murder it, it wouldn't melt the bathtub that it did yeah and they would also be way dead before that <laughs> bathtub yeah yeah, yeah. i mean this is a weird ghost it could probably heat that shit up faster than it would cool who knows it's the ghost of Harvest Past. Come on, guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That's fine. I'll give you this for now. But it does make me, again, infuriated. So Courage takes the next logical step, which is I'll dig all the way under the house and into the basement. And that's what they do. And then what happens when he gets to the basement, though? Oh. They're all sweating no to death. Uh huh. And where? Well, what about the water? The pipe it melted and sand started pouring out of it. Sand. Don't so how do we that. deal with this poor problem? <laughs> Sweat. Sweat. Yeah. Not a great. I guess if it's the only source of water, there you go. But yeah, the uh, the they use sweat and the the plant revives, and that's enough to appease the harvest moon, folks. Yeah, the harvest moon's pretty. He's easy. Yeah, he's, he's easy he didn't want to kill him. He just wanted them to grow shit, right? Like, he he wanted them to leave. And then that's like not a farm. Which is also another plot hole uh, they have because as soon as it hit midnight, instead of uh making them leave he closes everything so they cannot leave well you know you just murder him at that point they didn't take your they didn't take your deal they didn't take you seriously now they gotta pay the price even if it's just being scared for a few minutes they didn't take your deal so now you murder him 
Oh, they also that. tried to murder them just straight off the bat. Well, uh, again, poltergeist activity is probably meant to make them leave. Right, but he locked all the doors, so Courage had yeah, to drive no. the car through the house to get to them. Yeah, that started out early. He just wanted to... I don't know, fuck, man. Yeah, he just yeah, wanted I, murder. I, he was just like, I'm going to be the nice guy about this and let you leave, except I'm not going to let you leave. Yeah, it was weird. I guess... We, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no. Shit's weird. Big plot hole. But hey, yeah. Eustace is a farmer. He grew a pretty plant, and now he's going to try to sell it for money. Yeah, because he is now a farmer, and that was the moral of the story, even though the ghost of the Harvest Moon said, you've grown more than just a plant. And Muriel was like, you've grown a little inside. No, he hasn't. He didn't. He literally did not. No, he's the same. <laughs> God. <sighs> that's And that's, you know... That episode was really fun to watch. Upon re further review, that was a very... When you just boil it down to the bullet points, that's that was so fast to explain what happened. <laughs> yeah. That's it's what happened. Really... That was so fast. It's not really a long episode either. So. It's really not. It's a good episode. Yeah. It doesn't have to be long to be good. Uh, you got some cool effects with the, the, ha the head being uh, live... Live action. Live actor. action with a weird animated. Yeah. Yeah. Top weird. Head. With, with the, yeah, one of the character guy. actors from uh, from the show. Is it? Uh, uh, yeah, it is. It's it's um, it, it is credited to an actor of Fred Melon or er, Melamed. <laughs> Excuse me. I you're just gonna say Fred Melon. I'm sorry. Uh, now Fred Melamed, who's been in fucking so many things. Uh, he's a character actor. He's a uh, and yeah, he's a character actor. He's a voice actor. Um, he's done done a lot of a lot of shit all the way back to the 1960s. Uh, and uh, he was pretty prominent on Courage as just like a a voice actor to fill in a lot of roles and things. I was gonna say, I think I've heard his voice before. That makes sense. Yeah, probably. He yeah. was. Uh, he's done a lot of different things. So that's. That's fun that he is, he is there and that, again, we get to see Dilworth and crew playing with mixed medium of art and uh, animation. Well, would you boys like to hear some trivia about this episode? I guess I, so, Tim. I have trivia, I have confusions, and I have errors. Let's start with trivia. The this episode is, the, is called this is the, the part, Spirit of This is of the part Harvest of the episode Moon. where I just I get so fucking angry. Like the minute Tim starts talking, I just want to leave. He's I got just two thousands YouTube like channel. You see I the sand scrolling in the fucking. <laughs> I just want to walk away. I want to like, every... read it like one of those oh. YouTube videos where they just have the most deadpan voice. This episode hey, is called "The Spirit of Harvest Moon." That's a game theory. <laughs> God. This is the spirits of Horace Moon, and did you know that the lines don't match up to Courage's eyebrow? This is a huge mistake. This so is he, not this is go Cinema about. Sins. If you like that fact that Chum just said, here's the actual first trivia fact. The spirit of Harvest Moon is a giant live-action head. Said that. No, I didn't. I said the, the beginning of no, the I episode. No, I said that. Was called. Oh, yeah. No, I know. Uh, this is the first episode where Yusuf hasn't said the word stupid. Stupid fact. Whoa. I mean, hey, he says stupid in every episode. Oh, Ch Sheldon Taylor, you guys are going to love this next fact. Harvest Moon is a video game made by Natsume. <laughs> that's <laughs> it has not a nothing fact. to do with this fucking episode. A, that has nothing to do with this episode. B, that's... It's a fact, I guess. But also, the har the concept of the Harvest Moon has been around for millennia. Like, all of your major... Get through your shit so I can rant. I was going to say, the uh, yeah, we'll get there. Uh, the person who sings Happy Birthday Song on the radio is Jim P. Dilworth, the late brother of creator John R. Dilworth, who this episode is also, this isn't part of the truth, but... See, that's a piece of trivia, him. baby. Yeah, this episode has been dedicated to him. Not our episode, the episode of the show. Well, I think so both I episodes. I, it, I think the, the two packaged together are dedicated. Yeah. Uh, confusions. This is an episode where Eustace doesn't fall victim to the main villain at the end. 
I mean, that doesn't always happen. So I don't also, know not a confusion. confusion. I wasn't confused. Were you confused? No. All right. Uh, errors. When Eustace is in the bathroom, and make sure you listen to this closely, uh, he has his radio in the toilet, and the seat is up. However, when he is seen changing the radio station, the toilet seat is down. I mean, that's a continuity error. I'm going to give him that, but still. <laughs> so stupid. When Courage drove the truck into the house, at the time, Eustace dropped into the truck and wasn't... What? You should read that, because it's uh, bad English. Did you just have a fucking stroke? When Courage drove the truck into the house, at the time, Eustace dropped into the truck, and we didn't That's see it at the time. That's not how it's written. At the time, Eustace dropped into, and the truck was didn't see at this time. That's yeah. how it's written. I know what they're trying to say is the truck wasn't there when he fell through the yeah, I know. Yeah, we we've already covered that. Nobody um, cares. Okay, so I'm gonna rant <laughs> no here for a hot fucking minute. So <laughs> the concept of the harvest moon has been around for literally millennia. It it comes normally twice a year, once in September and once in uh like March. It's a time of the year when the moon is really big and normally kind of has an orange tinge to it. In ancient fucking cultures, things like the September equinox showed that it was time to start harvesting your crops. That's what this is all supposed to mean. The idea that some motherfucker out there <laughs> was like, hey, you know what's a good trivia fact to talk about for this it's episode? It's about Harvest Moon. It's about the video game Harvest Moon. Which is again about farming, which is again about the entire idea of the harvest moon in general. Like, what type of dense <laughs> motherfucker was like, clearly, this is an <laughs> clearly. allusion to the Nintendo video game? Yeah, no. It was, it was a preteen who literally just uh, got into the harvest moon and he doesn't know anything else. But uh, and he wants to be smart. Just once. Just please, Dad. Please, God. Just once. Like, <laughs> I, I would have... Can I, I know something no one else does? <laughs> I would have been more fucking impressed if they are like, Harvest Moon is the name of Neil Young, a uh, hit from 19... And I'd be like, that is a good fact. You're correct. It has nothing to do with this, but thank you for telling me. Yeah, it would have been better if they would have just worded it. No, man. Like, it's the... just so silly, because it's the, uh, it's the illusion that the trivia okay this is the, this is the problem we let this is the problem we let people run things um <laughs> all right that's what we did when you just let when you have websites that are just ran by people when you just by log people. in when you just have an ip address and you can just do whatever you want to think like you're right harvest moon is a video game made by them very neat if we're talking about how trivia works four mediums right this if there was like a harvest moon reference like oh in this episode courage does this like in the harvest moon video game an allusion to the game that is made by whatever that's a trivia fact the fact that there's something else with the name harvest moon <laughs> doesn't is not a trivia fact that's just not like a that's not an interesting tidbit if they yeah for if, anyone if they would have added like some other sentence before that like saying like the harvest moon is a reference to festivals that happen in multiple cultures blah 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 and then said harvest moon is also a video game made by Natsume and then it's like yeah okay that would count you'd be like okay that makes sense fine but it's just that shit that just it it's one of those moments where i i know i know everybody wants to be con i i know everyone wants to be considered smart I know that everyone's trying their best, and I applaud you for trying your best. But think for 30 seconds before typing a sentence on a website that is going to be seen by other people. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a folly of the internet, so, because the internet, you can be totally anonymous, and you'll never face repercussions for the shit you do. Well, I don't even... I'm not telling them to flog this person in the street. <laughs> I'm just saying... <laughs> I'm just imagining Taylor now, just like, Boo this man! <laughs> I would. It's just one of those things of like, this isn't this isn't a trivia fact, and it makes me upset that they or it is a trivia fact, but it has it is not a trivia fact that is needed to be posted on a courage thing. 
it's like every other YouTuber that does a video on courage or other shit that then brings up wildly inaccurate shit that has nothing to do with the topic at hand. And they're like, huh, pretty weird, huh? And it's like, no, it's not weird. It's probably very coincidental if you took 30 seconds to figure it out. Like, just because you can... And doesn't on, mean you should. And on this episode of Watch Mojo, we're looking at the top five courage trivia facts. I'm gonna hit somebody with the fucking bendy part of a fishing pole. <laughs> I live a hundred miles away from you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's not gonna be you. Not me. <laughs> but it might be me. I'm oh, just no. gonna mail. I'm gonna mail this person the bendy part of a fishing pole. Like, you <laughs> know, know what to do. Opens up his. Tim just opens up his mail and it just uh, has one of the, it's a box and he opens it and it just goes thwack and it <laughs> yeah, I spring load it. Yeah. I would hate to be the fucking UPS agent that has to check that. Is that a fishing rod? <laughs> I think this That's has true. some kind of device that we better open up and check yeah. out. So uh here's a here's a fun thing. It is uh that there are people on the on the Spirit of Halloween's wiki page that mm-hmm. are talking about how like uh, even though this person wasn't a villain, he still scares me. He is a villain. You mean he's the, the he's the he's the moon. You said Halloween. He's the uh, whatever. He's uh, the, he's, Halloween. He's, Close enough. He's the antagonist. I'm sorry. He is. Um. There's a bunch of people that are like this. Per- this is this villain scared the pants off of me as a kid. He's probably scarier than King Ramses. Oh, cool! They did a did they do a cartoon cartoon comic book? I don't know. And then they went. He's technically not a villain. Yes, he is. He's still he's the antagonist of the episode. He is a villain. Like he's the villain of the episode. What are you, folks? Guys, we can't do this. Oh my god, we yeah. This is semantics. He's a very soft villain. He's he's described as a demonic spirit on his own page. But he's a nice demonic spirit. He let them live. He didn't kill him, so he's not that evil. He tried. Cats didn't kill him either. Uh, but he he really wanted to. Yeah, really, this and guy just so wanted them this, to grow. So did this one. This guy just wanted them to grow something, but fucking Eustace had to be a dick to him. It, he it, was go- he was boiling them alive. But if Eustace would have at least tried, you wouldn't have known what he would have done. He's a villain. Fuck you. He's a villain. No, I'm. So- he's a very soft villain. Oh. Also, there is a Powerpuff Girls Super Smash Up comic book by IDW where Courage is on the cover, and apparently they go to Courage's world. Man, that's fact fell apart real fast, huh, buddy? I want to read it, but you I had don't so read much it. you had so much confidence beginning there, and then at the end of that, it was just like, and they apparently go to courage. I mean, I haven't read it. I don't fucking know. Do you want me to I read know. the synopsis for issue one? No, I no, I know. I just really like. I just liked that. That was funny. Uh, but when Tagalog Dee Dee accidentally activates Dexter's newest invention, the board again. The entire multiverse is suddenly at stake. Plus, a bonus Bored Courage and Cowardly Dog story by the Glyph. Uh, Bored again. Oh, so Courage isn't even in that episode. No. It's just a bonus story. Fuck you. Yeah, baby. That's how these work. I do want to, um, uh, before we rate this episode, I do want to talk about one thing that happened in this right. episode. And it happened to the next, but we'll, when we get there, we'll, we'll talk yeah, about it. Yeah, sure. Um, we totally glossed over the fact of Courage uh, eating all the food off of Muriel. In uh, no, I said it. I just didn't want to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we kind of wanted to glaze over it, really. It's weird, man. Just saying, it, it's just weird. Just the nice little weird. four moment before Vor was really a thing. Yeah. God damn. What if that was the start of it? It was the start of everything. <laughs> I mean, it, it's about the right time, right? Yeah. Ugh. Um, but with that, I'm going to give this episode oh. four floating heads of the spirit of Halloween out of five. Mm. Mm. I liked it. It was fun. It was very fast, but it was like a good, it was a good, like weird one. It had good yeah. art. It was, uh, quick, but it, it didn't feel quick in the moment. I, if you don't let me go next, Sheldon. Yeah, it's okay. I hope you do what I'm going to do. 
uh, I doubt it. Uh, I will do four out of five happy birthday songs by Jim P. Dilworth. <laughs> out of five. Uh, damn it, he did what I was going to do. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't worry, I'll mail him two boxes with fishing poles ready to go. Surely he wouldn't do it twice. <laughs> it's in the fucking <laughs> God damn it. Instructions on the outside say place on uh, ground stand over. <laughs> God damn it. Four out of four out of five missing JPEGs out of five. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> it's gone. But it was it was a good show. Yeah. And currently I'm also trying to do something, but I can't get it to work. And I don't think I can without Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, I like the audio tease. No one will know. I, I, oh no, I'll tell everyone. I was to fuck with you guys. I was gonna add some bullshit trivia on the next episode page, but I can't fucking do it. No, oh, oh, I have to well, account you have for to, it. Oh. You have to make an account. Yeah, uh, I don't want to do that. And I fuck already that. have the Liquid Courage <laughs> uh, podcast account on here. Uh, so yeah, no one else can do it. It would just be me yelling. <laughs> The courage entire is time. Is pink. It's courage. Tongue is pink. Courage, courage is a dog. Is a dog. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. Eustace is farmer. Muriel is Scottish. Man, fucking dummies. I hope you. Uh... Cats okay. is a cat. The whale is a whale. Speaking of whales, um... uh... a whale of a tail. Uh, to tell you, lads. I would like two. to say something before you start talking yeah. about this whale episode. Uh-huh. Uh, which is called the Sandwell Strikes. But uh, All right. <laughs> the synopsis on the, the wiki, man, really missing out. <laughs> like, yeah. really, like, one sentence for this yep. episode? Are you fucking kidding me? In six paragraphs for hey, the man. last episode? A whale yeah. shows up. He wants his accordion. Yeah. There you go. What else do you need to yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, in all honesty, I I can't argue with Sheldon's uh, roundup. All right, I give it. Uh... <laughs> oh, we're done. All right. Fine. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, it's it. Uh, yeah. The, so the Sandwell strikes. It's essentially a chase cartoon. Yeah. Except better. Which you know how? Which you know how we sit there. Yeah. Ah, I was gonna say, that, this is way better this, than Cajun. This Ray. one was more fun. Yeah. 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 Um so this is Sandwell Strikes and it is a episode in which a sand whale, which is a terrifying concept, shows up to the to the bag household and uh demands that the proprietor of the household Ichabod. <laughs> yeah, fucking Ickit. Thank you. Ickit. There we go. I don't know. Bag <laughs> returns his accordion. And if you notice, <laughs> there's no one in that house by that name. It's because there isn't. Uh, Ickit is apparently used as his dad. And he is and swindled the sand whale out of his accordion and i just realized this is like a weird moby dick scenario oh uh, you yeah, just got did that you <laughs> not know that uh no i did as time went on but my brain finally just kind of clicked all of the pieces into place oh. and uh this yeah we're gonna we're gonna probably need to bullshit here for a while because this is gonna be a fast one. Oh yeah um, wow. yeah so this episode, after this happens, the whale demands this accordion, which Eustace says, I ain't got it. That's my father. And then Muriel's like, it could, he, we, he's no longer with us, alluding to the fact that he's dead, which, again, bold cartoon for talking about death like that. I think it would have uh, been bolder if he just walked out on Eustace's mom and yeah. came back. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, the whale goes, I see him right there showing that the whale is not very smart. And so we then see a striking resemblance between Eustace and his dad, except for a bushy beard and a hat. I mean, the... granted the whale's probably not that smart, but if, and also if apparently very old, just, if, if your yeah. father was just a JPEG of you, 
Yeah. And then, you know, Photoshop the beard on. True. <laughs> I probably and, would make the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and the whale and Eustace goes, I ain't got it. My ma's got it. The whale doesn't believe him. So he starts wrecking up the place. And uh, right whale for president. Yeah. yeah. It continues to be that way. And then at the end of it, Eustace again goes, I don't have it. Ma's got it. And then the whale in retribution decides to swallow Muriel and Eustace and jump around a lot until they produce <laughs> oh, the... Oh, shake them up. Yeah, that's really what it is. Uh, <laughs> until they produce the accordion. And Courage is left alone again, so he has to go to Ma Bag's house, who's been a villain several times this season, but She's now is... A... Been, uh... Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but now she's chill with courage and he explains the scenario. She produces the accordion and the boat <laughs> that they have to row across the land. This is my boat. To get the, the whale. Ground. Yeah. Can't touch it. And they they go through this. We find out that Ma is going to not save Eustace, but instead capture the whale, which arguably is righteous you could do both same thing right yeah Yeah. you could do both once you capture the whale just open his mouth but i guess maybe they won't take a take him at the whale bank the moment the whale notices he's gonna (laughs) he will swallow his hostages that that's he'll chew on the cyanide pin that he's got in his teeth he'll break the arsenic barrel scenario yeah. we've ever been in and um so they go through this it hilarity and chase ensue they try to attract the whale with the accordion because swim because rowing a boat through dirt isn't that funny and uh it was funny for a little bit and then the ma falls off the boat he's got to toss her a life preserver but okay, then courage that, that was pretty yeah funny. courage then just runs after him and then they capture the whale and they get Courage gives back the accordion. He spits the, Muriel and Eustace out. Ma tries to catch him, but Courage cut the fucking net because he's an yeah, asshole. Because that'll be what st- stops you from capturing the whale, also. But <laughs> yeah, okay. But here's the thing about this, right? Like, Courage. Okay, so Ma Bag is not very great. She lives in a trailer. She's she's very poor. We've established this. That's been her yeah. her schemes is get money. Get money, um, get bitches. Yeah. And question mark, question mark, profit. No. So she wants to capture the whale because the whale sand whales are worth a bunch of money. Courage saves Muriel and Eustace from the whale who has destroyed their home and attacked his family. And Courage is like, no, you can't catch the whale and cuts the fucking net. Hey, why? All right, asshole. Next time I won't help. Like, holy shit, right? Like, I don't like Ma Bag, but she's justified in her actions, and Courage doesn't make any sense by being like, no, the whale must live. The whale what? must go free. By the way, folks, this is a sand whale. It can pop up anywhere. It's coming It'll to your, your house. Home. It'll eat your dog. It'll, It'll eat, eat you. Your... It'll eat your children. <laughs> And encourage yeah. it go. No, no, I was just sorry. The way you guys said that just reminded me. It's like you wouldn't download a car. <laughs> you wouldn't save a sand whale. It wouldn't save you. Like, it's so weird it that eats he's alive, boy. He's cool with that, and then it swallows my bag. Which is probably the best part of the episode, because then it goes to Muriel, who says, I'm glad everything worked out ru- uh, just fine. And, and Eustace like goes, goes, Ah, but me, he swallowed me, Ma! And Muriel and just I'm looks glad at him. Everything was just fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turns and goes, Well, I'm glad everything has worked out fine. They're yeah. probably the meanest Muriel's ever been. Yeah, <laughs> like outwardly, absolutely. And so, like, this all happens. And then we cut to a whale accordion symphony. And that was the... He needed it for that. But I just want to go back to, like, inside the whale, 
horrible things happen to Muriel and Eustace. Well, yeah, uh, well to Muriel. Muriel. Eustace is having the time of his life. He finds his chair. He finds their refrigerator. He's refrigerator. fine. Yeah, he's having a grand old time inside the whale's stomach, you know. Maybe Muriel's he should live there. hanging on to uvulas. <sighs> getting slapped around by the tongue. Ah, hmm, I still don't like that scene. I, just, yeah, just, I just, just getting a good old tongue lashing, literally. Hot. Yeah. Sticky sweet. And uh, another vor thing. I just want to point mm. out. Yeah. Having in here. Uh, they pick a odd. theme. They did. Yeah. They did. <laughs> this is a children's cartoon. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stick to the theme. It helps the children understand what's going on. Yeah. And um. It's fucking weird. It's, it's it's weird. And again, very quick episode when you when, when you, you really when you break, boil it down. When you break it down to what we've got. Yeah. I still don't think it's only two sentences worth on this fucking Oh no. No. But, I think know, that's we broke it down ridiculous. into way more sentences. Yeah, 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 yeah. I put a lot of periods there. I think uh, one, of the, the... One, of, one of my favorite <laughs> things in this little chase scene. I don't I don't uh, remember if we touched on it too terribly much, but Courage the whole time is kind of leaning over the edge of the boat as he's rowing this sand boat and mm-hmm. daunting the accordion off so the sand whale will see that the accordion's over here. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. a trivia fact. Yeah, well, he's trying to fish with it. Works. He's trying to fish with the accordion. Yep. Yeah. He's he's the, like, whale, hey, the whale it just is... sounded a... like one, Tim. I'm sorry. No, Whale no, you're has a, good. No. Has a very distinct voice. It, it's the voice of Arnold Stang, who shows up in a couple other episodes too. Another oh, yeah. just kind of character voice actor. I want to save that name for a fucking D and D character. Yeah, That's he great. was um, <laughs> he was known as being kind of a comic actor for a long time. He lived till 2000. He was born in like 1918. He lived to 2000, uh, 2009. Excuse me, and he was 90 some when he died. Hmm. And, um, yeah, he did a lot of shit. Like, he was in a lot of, like, blockbuster movies as, like, the comic relief. Yeah. And, uh, did a lot of voice acting and, like, other shit. Jen, I'm glad you thought that was good enough to be a trivia fact, because as I'm looking through some of these trivia facts, they aren't. <laughs> well, they no, that, that, that was the joke, Tim. <laughs> I know, no. The, well, None this of the is not a joke. Are really... <laughs> these are real bad. There's, like, two of them that are good. But yeah. before we get there, is there anything mm-hmm. else? I don't really think so. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, these are fast episodes. Yeah, these yeah. two were very fast. But, but good. I yeah. like them. Yeah. Let's uh let's hit on the trivia. How about what if, didn't, that? what if we didn't? What if we didn't have me what if, what if you didn't send me screaming into the woods? First trivia fact. No. This Here is the go. first appearance of the sand whale in Icket Bag. Uh, Except we didn't see it get bag because it's no. Well, technically, we need to start playing. It back. Uh, we saw his boot in an earlier season. I count that. Yeah, that was the first time they mentioned. Yeah, I don't know if I would say they never mentioned name. They just said you'd never fill his father. No, it's his. Boot. It's his appearance because he's in a picture, he's so he appeared picture. on film. It's yeah. just Eustace with a beard, though. Come on, yeah, it's a really bad show. <laughs> no, effect. it's another character that never comes back. And you'll well, love you, to that. <laughs> if you like that fact, you're gonna love this one: the returning <laughs> appearance of Ma Bag. Dumb. I don't know why it's Dumb. returning appearance of Ma Bag. She's returned a couple times. Yeah, no, because I, I, again, somebody was just like, "Here's some trivia." After we need the, filler. <laughs> yeah. After the sandwell chases the Bag family throughout their house, he forces the trio to run up two flights of stairs. As the family is running up the staircase leading to the attic, a portrait of Courage is seen hanging on the wall nearby. That is actual yep. trivia. I'll give it that. That's It's there, that's for sure. Somebody favorite, hung it up. My favorite thing is they actually had to put in quotations, though. Pictured to the right, and there is a picture <laughs> of the picture. <laughs> now we just need a picture of the picture of the picture. Well, I'm, what, I'm recording the screen, so I have it. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. The haunting of Bly Manor needed portraits. Yeah, we go. This um, episode is dedicated to Jim P. Dilworth, the older brother yeah. of John R. Dilworth, who died of cancer March 11, 2001, at the age of 42. That's a trivia, yeah. but it's a sad it's one. It's a sad trivia, but the it dedication is, a trivia. is shown after the sand whale is seen flying to the camera following the episode's the end scene. 
Yeah, this is like the only one of the only Courage episodes that has like an after a dedication. <laughs> yeah. Well, a dedication, but after the end scene. Yeah, they have that scene of the sandwich flying towards the camera mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was. Yeah. Which is a, yep. a good shot too. So, leave that. Uh, this is one of the handful of episodes in the series, and don't get too angry. Where my I'm bag... gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you right now before he fucking says this shit. This is a fucking paragraph. This is a paragraph. <laughs> Of a, a trivia fact, and it's the dumbest fucking thing. Go ahead. Uh, as soon as I started reading it, I knew I had to say, don't get too angry. <laughs> this is one of the handful of episodes of the series where Ma Bags at least partially portrayed as one of the antagonists, or is at odds of courage in some way or another. In this episode, but... she calls him stupid accordion giving dot dog for attempting to resolve the conflict by returning the accordion to the sand whale another I'm glad episode... I don't follow you guys on this because it's funner just to feel it revealed from you two yeah another episode in which courage provides to be a hindrance to one of ma's greedy schemes is scuba scuba do <laughs> that last part could have been why out for sure <laughs> why did somebody write this i scuba scuba do we're I... coming after you i get that ma bag is not always the antagonist but she's never in their favor, right? Oh, she's never a good person. Yeah, no, she's never. For the only one them. that was okay was her first appearance, where her and Eustace had emotional breakthroughs. Yeah, that I agree, hundred percent. It's it's like even <sighs> then, she was still mean to Eustace. She yes. Just... <laughs> no, so, I know they're bad. The people. antagonists. Yes, like, technically. Yes, I know. Ah, uh, so how angry can we make Taylor? Well, this last trivia fact. We'll do oh, he's it. He's already pretty angry. The accordion <laughs> sounds similar to Donkey Kong. How? <laughs> <laughs> There's no How? way. I, I, you can't make that shit up. Someone fucking wrote that. <laughs> How? I, I just Provide evidence. Understand. It doesn't. It doesn't sound hey, like Donkey Kong. Hey, those of you that listen to our podcast, if you are the person that wrote that trivia fact, provide evidence. Or do something. Or write something. Like, it's... I it's not even chip tuned. I don't understand. It's just the accordion sounds. It may be trying, digital. Like what sounds. Donkey Kong are they talking about? Maybe it's <laughs> Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> Who knows? It Fuck, sounded more like the Curse theme song than it did. It did. It did actually because it mimicked it through part of it. But whatever. Yeah, it, that doesn't make any sense to me. That was a really bad stupid. One. It's yeah. a stupid one. The episode gets four accordions. Four accordions. <laughs> Out of five. Uh, I will give this one 3.5 Icket Bags out of five. Yeah. Uh, no. Sounds <laughs> like a medical condition. The, it the, is. The, the reason I'm doing 3.5 is because it's... When you look back at it, I like the episode a lot, and I do remember the Sand Whale episode, and I like mm-hmm. how it ended. I like everything about it. The problem is it's very simple. Like yes. there, when you think of season one, you think of like Cats Motel. Yeah. You think of like everything in that season, and even in this season. Yeah, but I'll forget the sand whale. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, they're more complex, right? The story yeah. isn't just like let's jump into a sand boat and <sighs> fake sand drown. Like <laughs> so stupid. Hey man, mm. if Robin Hood Men and Tides can do it, then. <laughs> But they did it before, and they did it better. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Uh, I guess I rate it. Fucking 3.5 Graboids out of 5. Oh. Because that's basically what the sandworm is. That's what the sandworm is. is. Yeah, Yeah, he's he's Graboid. He's a Graboid with personality. And that's that's okay in my book. I'll give you that, yeah. Graboid. Yeah. You gotta deal. You gotta deal with the graboids, baby. He's a graboid boy. We're watching Tremors next, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Tremors cast. No. No, I'm sure that's a thing. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, um, we are one episode away from the end of the season. Our next one will be the end of season two. It'll be the Tower of Doctor Zalost. Which is and a, I remember liking that one. Yeah, yeah it'll be a good one. It's a nice episode. There's CGI in it. They really went off on a good point, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, I haven't seen it. We're gonna. It'll be good. We're gonna hit it uh, real nice. 
And uh, so we're gonna I, hit it. I do <laughs> want to ask you guys about something that's uh-huh. courage related. Um, obviously, but there is an article that they've been trying to push into this fandom, and I noticed them been trying to do it for a while. I don't like where this is going. Uh, how do you feel about a Scooby Doo and Courage the Cowardly Dog crossover? Did that uh, not happen? I thought it already happened. Did it happen? Because it... I feel like they had an episode. Like well, I feel they, like it was like the Johnny uh, Bravo one, wasn't it? No. Mm. No, no, uh, because they had an episode. I know we've with... talked about this before. The crossovers happening. They they did a Scooby Doo episode. Oh with Supernatural. yeah. It just hasn't happened yet. I don't think it has. Courage happened. the Cowardly Dog and Scooby Doo. Might it might be it's coming? On its way. Yeah, it's, it's very a, odd. It, striking upcoming, while the iron pot, boys. Upcoming crossover direct-to-video film. Do, do you guys, <laughs> yeah. guys want to hear more about it just real fast? Um, oh, we got time. Yeah, we do. Uh, so this is happening, and the idea is that it's Courage will face against Cats, the Quack, Black Puddle Queen, Wearmole, Big Toe, and Cajun... Fox, once again, after they survive their fall in Ball of Revenge, which is an episode we haven't gotten to yet. Nope. I think it's in season three, if I am correct. Season yeah. four. Uh, but how do you feel about all these villains coming back? Most of them actually have been in episodes so far. Well, yeah. I think all of them have. I find it very strange that they've decided they're striking while the iron is well i'm trying to figure out what style they're gonna be in uh if i had to be courage or is it gonna be scooby if i go back because they they've done crossovers before with scooby Doo, right because they did one yeah no 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 not no no not like that not like that i want to know what art style is it going to be in like the scoob art style because that's the newest movie that came out I think they'll find or a is way it to going do... to be like a like a what's new Scooby Doo type thing. No, I think it's a what new Scooby Doo because when they did the supernatural yeah. one, it was the like not old school, but it was what's new Scooby Doo. Because yeah, well, currently, what, what would Courage look like in a what's new Scooby Doo? Well, I, I think that their ah. animation is close enough. That they might be able to pull it off where he's pretty much the same animation where he was before. Also, Close which enough. dog do you think's going to take the lead? Yeah, good question. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, because there, there is... Fucking Christ. There, it's called Scooby Natural. Yeah. Scooby's just in his trailer getting ready and Courage is like, Oh, I'm so glad to be working Ooh. with you, Scoob. Ooh. Yes, Scoobies. to be announced, Scooby-Doo and Courage the Cowardly Dog. Is is slated. Uh, the the one that's coming out prior to that is Scooby Doo and the Sword and the Scoob. Oh, I could have called that fucking anything. Yeah, uh, I think they get transported back to medieval. And times. they call it Sword and the Scoob. The sword and the Scoob, baby. Um, might... This there, it's in the style of scooby doo and the like the return to zombie island oh okay. um oh, scooby doo no. and the goblin king i was oh, excited okay. right up until i remembered the word return in that sentence <laughs> remember that they did that two years ago they returned to zombie island we own bad. that dvd that was it's bad, bad. The, the animation it's bad fine. it's terrible it's awful <laughs> yeah it's yeah. bad yeah, you should never go back. There's no reason to go back. They could have um, gone back. They could have, but they decided to throw that shit away. They they, yeah. they they were like, nope. Forget everything that made Zombie Island good. <laughs> Apparently, Scooby-Doo, the sword and the scoob, was originally titled Scooby-Doo in King Arthur's Court. I knew it was going to be a King Arthur thing. There's no way it wasn't going to be. No. Yeah. The pre- the premise is Morgan Le Fay sends the gang back in time to the days of Camelot where they meet King Arthur and Merlin. Shaggy accidentally releases Excalibur, causing chaos in the land, leading the gang to go on a rescue mission when Shaggy is kidnapped. Isn't what? Isn't Morgan Le Fay the villain in King Arthur's court? I believe so. Yes, he is. Um... So, 
There's that shit. I don't know. If it comes out, we'll watch it and we'll do a review. Yeah, God about... damn it. No, don't make these shitty promises. Nah, we will. So the, the big question I have for it is, so the villains so far that have been listed are Cats, the Quack, Black Puddle Queen, which are three that, okay, you can see them coming back to do something. Wermel, I don't, I'm not sure really there's much of a plot point for that one. Yeah, I don't need that one. I can do that. Cajun Fox, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, this is a fan fiction, Tim. <laughs> yeah, fuck, this is the uh, Godfather of all fan fictions, dude. We yeah. <laughs> there is no episode coming. It's just a fan fiction. It sounds about right. Well, that's all I have. So. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's all, folks. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> you just jump through a wall or something. Yeah, I wish. I wish I jumped. <laughs> yeah and with that we'll be back next month with another gripping episode of courage yeah. the cowardly dogs official pod we're not the official podcast no. liquid courage never be liquid the courage, courage podcast. podcast not official yeah not official don't know it could be nope <laughs> we had to pay <laughs> want to pay us they're not gonna pay us to do it uh fine yeah, anyway, we'll be back next month with another episode of Liquid Courage. It'll be the end of season two. Be excited, be hype. Clearly, we are. Um, <laughs> hey, man, I am fucking trying. I'm ready for the Tower of... Uh, what's, what's Power? Yeah, I gotcha. You. you got it. Right. I, Only so I'm much ready. Yeah. Anyway, so there's that. Be excited. I promise we'll be better. Listen, the Scooby-Doo news made me not so excited. Yeah, right? That one kind of fucking zapped me. Thanks for that. Thanks, we had to make it to an hour. You did the one where we'd be watching it. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we have to. It's our job that we don't get paid for. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> we should end here before it gets any more depressing. Jeez, it's not depressing. Good. It's fun. We'll see you next month. Bye. I love you all. Bye. Bye. That was the Liquid Courage Podcast, an in-depth look at every episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog. Music was provided by Visionless. You can find them at www.soundcloud.com slash V-I-S-I-O-N-L-3-S-S. We do not own the rights to Courage the Cowardly Dog. Until next time, have a wonderful night.